Hi, I'm Jacob from Status Update, and this is my look at the Windows 8 Consumer Preview, Microsoft's latest inter iteration of the Windows series that is trying to bring a cohesive interface to the Xbox, to the tablet, and to the phone experience. They kind of get it right in some ways, and they fail miserably in other ways. Let me go through real quick. This is the Metro interface. This is your start menu in Windows 8. Let me go through some of the things people are wondering about, which is how does a, a OS basically optimized for the tablet work on a desktop? Well, quite simply, any time where you would use your finger to scroll across, you can use the scroll on your mouse to basically scroll across. Now, on the lock screen, I'll show you what the lock screen looks like. In order to unlock, it's just like you would on a phone. You kind of hold and drag up or use the scroll to simply scroll up. You type in your password, and there you are. So any time where you would kind of scroll with your finger, you just simply scroll with your mouse. That is hit or miss. In some apps, you can actually you cannot scroll with your mouse. In others, you can. Let's go through all these tiles one by one, and then I'm going to go over some of my pros and cons. We'll start with the store. This is where you can buy apps. You can scroll with your mouse side to side. You can look at different things. Uh, you can simply install apps, any app you'd want. Um, I, it's kind of cool, I must say, the way that notifications kind of pop up on here and the way they handle that. So let's say I want to install the Vimeo app. I'll say I want to install it. It's going to show me up here that it is installing Vimeo and I can continue to scroll through the, uh, the, interf the interface or go to you know, somewhere else within Windows and then it's going to say Vimeo was installed and I can click it and it'll actually open up Vimeo. So here's Vimeo. This is what Vimeo looks like with a Metro style interface. Xbox Live Games is if you had an Xbox uh, connected to your Microsoft account, you could obviously play games actually within the Windows interface or the phone interface or whatever. I don't, so we're not going to do that. Uh, the Maps interface is actually Bing Maps on your, uh, mobile or on your uh, desktop. So it's real simple uh, to uh, search for a location or business. I can get directions. So let's say I want to get directions to Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's going to give me directions. Here's a couple problems I've noticed, though, with the apps, and I'll illustrate it with this. I have these directions, and that's great and grand. Unfortunately, there's no way to print them. Uh, I right-click, and I can even um, uh, right-clicking gives you options within any app. And even here, I don't have the option to actually print these directions that I've, uh, that I've, that I've printed out. Uh, so that's really frustrating. It's a beautiful interface, but I, it's just not usable to me if I can't print it or send it to my phone or something like that. And I don't know if it actually has that interface, but we'll see. Uh, Internet Explorer is Internet Explorer 10. Uh, this is just honestly one of the things that's really awful in, uh, in this interface is Internet Explorer 10. Um, it looks like, honestly, they just took it from the Windows phone and, uh, and stuck it on here. Everything is kind of this just awkwardly bulky contrast. There's not many options in here. Uh, it's just a bizarre interface. This is your video interface. So this is um, uh, uh, what I have in terms of videos on the computer. And it's going to show you what you can buy from Microsoft in terms of videos, as well as what you have. So here's my collection, and I can just click here, and I can uh, play a video, and it's, it's kind of slow to load, but as you can see, now it's going to play a video from an app drawer we did on Status Update. And uh, it's, it's kind of choppy, and it, and it moves really slow, and that's actually one of the things that's, that's really buggy about this consumer preview, is the fact that any rich media is extraordinarily slow and slows down the system to almost a halt. Uh, this next one is the desktop. We'll show you that in a minute. This is photos. As you can see, it's a live tile, so it's going to scroll through all my photos. Uh, and it's actually a really simple picture library. You can scroll through all the photos you have in your library. You can make albums. Uh, if you right-click something, you can select it and you can say, browse by date, create a slideshow, different things like that. Or I can open it up and just click side to side or uh, move side to side with the arrow keys into different photos. It's a really no-frills photo viewing. The messaging app is when we get into kind of some cooler things. You can connect the messaging app with Facebook. So you can actually reply to people and get uh, people to talk to you uh, from Facebook within the app. So that's kind of cool. Uh, the mail app will sync with Gmail, which is what I have here. You can also set up different accounts with it. Uh, so if you have a, a Hotmail account or a Yahoo account, you can set that up as well. Uh, it's a really, really pared down limited version of uh, Gmail. There's not much you can do with it. I don't actually believe you can put things in labels or folders or anything like that. Actually, here are my folders. So it does actually give you the option uh, to see different folders and whatnot. But I don't know if I like drag something over here. I don't, I don't know if I can actually put it in a folder within this. So that's kind of an issue. Your weather app, uh, the built-in one's actually really nice looking, the Bing weather app. This is the weather app, kind of shows you the weather down here. You can scroll through to see more days. You can click more to see more information, less to see less. Uh, it's actually a really good looking app. Uh, but there's other weather apps out there that I actually think are better. We'll look at one in a minute. Calendar app will also sync with your Gmail calendar, which is awesome because that is something I use frequently. 
and uh, you can click on things and you can change change it. Uh, all these different details. Uh, it'll also sync with any other calendar you might have if that happens to be on Windows Live. That's pretty cool. Uh, and you can view by month, week, whatever. Right clicking gives you options within a particular app. People app is I think one of the strongest applications within this interface. It'll actually sync with your Gmail and it will also sync with LinkedIn and it'll sync with a bunch of different other ones if you want it to. So you can actually click on what's new and this will actually tell you. Uh, on Facebook for instance, uh, you know, this particular American Idol posted this or someone posted this or someone posted this status update. So it kind of is the ability to uh, kind of see all of your social networks within this one uh, interface. You can click on me and you can actually see yourself here. So what's new with me? Well, all these different things. This is what I've posted on all my different uh, accounts, Facebook uh, primarily. Uh, it gives me notifications from Facebook right within this interface, photos from Facebook right within this interface, which is kind of a, a cool feature uh, if you want to kind of get all of your social stuff within one particular interface. You have games over here, you have a camera app and you have an Xbox companion. This is your music app and this is where I want to actually show you how buggy this particular interface actually is. So let's let's play a musical tune here. Uh, and actually, this is going to be uh, let's let's start from the beginning. So I want to drag back here. All right. So we're going to start from the beginning. Now I want to be able to move around the interface. Look how slow the interface just automatically becomes when music is playing. Just from music. I mean, I'm I'm not talking anything hard here. This is music. If I go back into music and I want to pause it. I gotta click here, it's just a really, it's not slick when you're playing media. Video, music, whatever, it really just slows it down. Skydive is the cloud service, uh, that's really cool because you can actually add documents uh, right to your cloud drive really, really easily if you click add down here and you uh, can then sort, you can go into your particular uh, thing, so I'll go into pictures, let's say I wanna add, just click the pictures you wanna add and click add to skydive, that simple, so that's really cool. Uh, and then you get into your finance and AccuWeather is actually a really beautiful app on this system. Uh, you can click here to get your alerts. You can get 15-day forecast expanded here. Uh, scrolling actually goes up and down in this interface, which is really kind of bizarre. So that's something they might want to uh, get some continuity within apps is the scrolling. And then we get into some of the weird things. So now I'm going to show you kind of the difference in the continuity and how they mesh uh, the Aero interface, the standard uh, Windows 7 desktop with Metro. So as you can see right here, I have Google Chrome listed. It's a tile, right? Very simple. I, actually, if I right-click it, I can open it in a new window, run it as administrator, open file location. I can do a lot of different things with it. I can pin it to my taskbar, all these different things. Now, I want to open it. It's going to open it in, in Arrow, in Windows 7 look, uh, which is really very frustrating. It's this discontinuity between looks. Uh, in order to get back to my Start menu, as you notice, there's no Start button down here on uh, the Windows arrow portion of Windows 8, if you will, unless you hover over the bottom left corner and then you can just click it and it goes to the Start menu. Um, you can right click within the basic Start menu, click All Apps, and then you can get to anything. But even Calculator opens up in Windows uh, 7, so to speak. So there's, this, there's kind of almost two ways to experience Windows in Windows 8. The Metro style Start menu way, where you have apps like a phone interface or a tablet interface, or the standard Windows 7 interface that is kind of buggy in the consumer preview because as you can see, the background's still there. There we go. Uh, you can hover over the right-hand side and get your multitask view so you can see all the windows you have open. It's kind of like your taskbar in the Metro style. So you can kind of see, oh, I can go to my calendar or I can skip over to, you know, my doc my SkyDive or whatever. Or SkyDrive, rather. I'm sorry, I've been saying that wrong. Um, so those are, those are some issues. Uh, and then obviously you have the Windows 7 version and in Windows, uh, the, the Windows 7 kind of look, you have charms on the side. Hover over here and you can share, you can have devices, the start menu settings, all these different things. Um, I think as a consumer preview, this does a, actually a really horrid job of, of showing what this interface is like. It's extremely buggy. Uh, there are some serious issues with it. Um, but, you know, that's what you get with a beta uh, edition, essentially. Here are my hopes and aspirations for it. This, is, this, this tar start menu you're looking at right now is completely kind of going to redefine how we use a computer. Before, you had this, right? You had a menu down here, your start button to get to things, uh, and it was just this simple interface with what you had open down in the bar, and that was it. Now it's turning into like a phone, where you have these different apps, these different tiles, and what you have open isn't necessarily obvious unless you go to the right-hand side, and you pick through them. I don't know if that's necessarily a great way to use a computer with a mouse and a keyboard, and that's kind of what I'm worried about. And I almost feel like the Metro interface and the start menu is ahead of its time, 
where it's going to fail because it's just way too early into the game. The other thing I really hope they do is they kind of create this problem of the discontinuity between interfaces. There's an incredible discontinuity here between the Aero interface, the standard Microsoft interface, with the ribbon at the top and all these different things, and the Metro interface. They clash. And I'll give you a perfect example. If I go to the charms here and I click settings, you can see this is what Metro looks like overlaid on Aero, and it just is weird. I mean, Aero is this glass kind of really, you know, graphic intensive interface that is supposed to be this really kind of cool, you know, uh, glossed over kind of a thing, whereas Metro is what it is. It's Metro. It's flat. It's no shadows. It's really, really simple. I like Metro as an interface. I don't know if I like it with Arrow on top of it. I don't like the fact that you have to switch between Arrow and Metro in order to go back and forth. And it's almost like there's two disconnected, disjointed experiences within Windows 8 that makes it really confusing and takes away from the whole experience you have within the operating system. I wish what they would have done is combined this with a start menu down here that's in Metro Interface so that almost instead of this being my start menu, this is my desktop background. So, the start, so I have all these live tiles as my background on my desktop and then my Metro style taskbar down here where I can flip between applications. That would have been an ideal com uh, co combination for these two interfaces. And uh, as you can see, it, it, there's some serious graphical problems with it right now. It's a really buggy preview. I recommend not installing it as your primary OS, but rather install it as a dual boot with Windows 7, which you can do quite easily. Uh, there are plenty of articles online to show you how to do that. If I had to give it a star rating right now, I'm not going to probably give it too harsh of a rating just because it is a beta. Out of five stars, though, I'd probably give it a two and a half to maybe a three. I think as I think I I hope in October when they release this that they find a better way to combine the standard Windows experience with the Metro style Windows experience. And I think the combination that would really work perfectly is having the tiles as a background with a Metro style typical user interface on uh, Windows interface on top of it. I think that's going to be a much better way to actually uh, to actually go about doing this. I think there's a lot of great things about Metro and a lot of great things about the live tile system. Uh, a lot of things that make it easier to use. Uh, the problem I have right now, though, is that it just does not work at all with Arrow, and it just does not work at all uh, inside the standard uh, way you use a computer with a mouse and a keyboard. So that is my Windows 8 Consumer Preview Review. I'll have more about this on the seventh episode of Status Update on Sunday, March the 4th. That is uh, tomorrow if you're watching this on Saturday. Until then, check us out at redtie.tv slash su and at Status Update RTM on Twitter.